Shabbat Shalom, Salam, Sabbath peace. This is a very interesting uh, sabbatical time that we're in presently because it's also the first day of the new year. It's uh, the new year, the Western, the Western New Year according to the Western tradition. So one would say Happy New Year, but this particular day we say Shabbat. Shalom, Senbet Salam, Sabbath peace, and this is the fourteenth Sabbath. Uthanawasar Ata Seder Teda, as other Jews and Hebrews would say, we say actually Sir At according to the Ethiopic, and we have entered into the Ethiopic Exodus. Is the Seat or Shemot according to the first words uh, Semoch? or Shemot, according to the first words of the Hebrew, which in the Royal Amharic of Nagus Negesk, the Maui Hala Selassid Met Af Kedus, would be Simoch, which means plural name. So in the Ethiopic Exodus, or Orit Ze Sa'at. And this is the 14th Sabbath, Ufinawa Sar'at, Ufinawa Order. And it's called in the Hebrew, Wa'era, or the Ashkenazis would say Vayera, and the Sephardics would more say Wa'era. We would say, according to the Royal Amharic, the Metaf Kedus, the Metaf Tegaletu, 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 which means I was revealed or I appeared. I was revealed or I appeared in space on the words found in the third verse of Exodus chapter 6, verse 3. And I appeared to Abraham and to Yishak and to Yaakov by the name of El Shaddai or God Almighty. But by my name Yahweh was I not known to them and this in itself is an interesting this is an interesting teaching that goes along with this fundamental idea concerning the triune god or the god of abraham the god of yisahak and the god of yaakov now the orit zemuse or the parasha the kufl reading the kufloch is from exodus chapter 6 verse 2 to exodus chapter 9 Verse 35, the Haftarah, or the Nabiat reading, is from Ezekiel chapter 28, verses 25, to Ezekiel chapter 29, verse 21, and from the Burt Hadasha, or the Hadis Kidan, the New Covenant, it's Romans chapter 9, verses 14 to verse 33. So, According to our Sarat, and most of you are familiar with this, and if you have the um, the, the learning, the chart, the lessons, the sabbatical reading, you basically know where it begins. <coughs> now, this particular Torah sabbatical or Sabbath reading entails uh, Exodus chapter 6, the answer of Yahweh to Musa's first prayer. And then we have the families of Israel are enumerated. Then the renewed commission. The renewed commission as we get into chapter 7, giving this an overview briefly, going through an overview. We have the contest with Peron or Pharaoh, the second, the second demand. And the, the first miracle in chapter 7, the contest with Pharaoh, the third demand. Then we have the contest with Pharaoh, the second miracle, and the first judgment. The first judgment comes into play. Then in chapter 8, we have the contest with Pharaoh and the fourth demand. And then we have the fourth miracle, the contest with Pharaoh and the fifth demand. Then the contest with Pharaoh, the sixth miracle, and the fourth judgment, the contest with Pharaoh, the first compromise is refused. The contest with Pharaoh, the second 
compromise is refused. Then we have the seventh miracle. Now as we enter into uh, chapter 9, and this reading goes to uh, verse 35, which is all of the chapter, we have the contest with Pharaoh, the sixth demand, the eighth miracle, and the fifth judgment. The contest with Pharaoh and the seventh demand, the contest with Pharaoh, and the tenth miracle, and the seventh judgment. So this is where we are covering within the 14th um, Asra Aratanyo Senbet Nebab, or the 14th sabbatical reading according to Sarat, which is uh, this Sabbath today, which is New Year's Day within the Western uh, Gentile tradition, is January 1st, which happens to fall on the Sabbath day. And so this is uh, Shabbat Shalom, Senbet Salam time for us within the uh, Kol Israel or among Israel, the Beta Israel, but for the world, for those outside, it is a happy new year. But there's this significance to this because this is 2011 with, within the West. And we currently are in a a spiritual Egypt, as we have been seeking to um, discuss and and to prove with the available evidence and the available um, documentation. And this is very, very interesting, as we will seek to get into this a little bit more, this particular area of Scripture, and just to um, just to to backtrack. Muse or Moses is a type of Mashi, it's a type of Christos, it's a type of Christ, uh, the deliverer. And he's a divinely chosen deliverer. He's rejected by Israel and he turns to the Goy or the Ahzab or the other peoples, the Gentiles. Now, during his rejection, he gains, as we covered already, a Gentile or a non uh, Israel, a bride, or a Gentile bride, Zipporah, the Medianite, the Ethiopian, an Ethiopian bride. Afterward, he again appears as Israel's deliverer, and now he is accepted. After this experience, he is accepted by the people who had formerly, when he was a part of Pharaoh's house, or when he lived as an Egyptian, speaking about Moses now, he was rejected. Then he fled. He gained an Ethiopian bride. Afterward, he again appears as Israel's deliverer and is accepted. Now, officially, Musa, he typifies Christos as Nabi, as a, a prophet, a Baki, as, as an advocate as a, a intercessor and as a leader or a meri or a nugus, a, a king, while in relation to the house of God or the beta el, he is in contrast. He's in contrast with the Mashi or in contrast with Christos. Now, Musa, Moses was faithful as a servant over another's house. The teaching is that Christ, as a son over his own house, is what we are taught by the study of the epistle to the Hebrews, or Ibrawian, chapter 2, verses 5 and 6. Now, at the point that we are in our sabbatical studies today, chapter 6 of the book of Exodus is the answer of Yahweh to Moses, Moses' First prayer, Moses' first prayer. Now, there's many elements. There's many elements that goes along with a good and a complete comprehension of Exodus, as we have been touching on Egypt, ancient Egypt, and the wisdom of Egypt and the Kamite mythos. The ancient Egyptian wisdom is very important since Moses himself was learned in 
all the all the wisdom of the Egypts or the Egyptians, and he was mighty both in word and deed. Now, Gerald Macy's work, we're going to make some references to that as we go forward in these studies because it's important for us because there's many elements that we'll, we'll miss. We'll just go straight over, not really recognizing the proper context. And as we teach, if it's not in context, then it's basically nonsense. But there's much truth to this. But if it's not understood in this proper background, we can't understand this by looking at the modern today's world. You understand even the context of the King James Version of the Bible requires some study or some initiation within how to properly understand even this particular translation. Now, how much more the real context of the the time and the people in order to understand exactly what the Word is saying to us in 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 that day and what the reference is to us in this present time so once again um shabbat shalom send bet salam to those of the family and to others and generally happy new year on this first day of the western gentile new year and our sabbatical uh, day, our Sabbath, the Sabbath of Yahweh Eloheinu. This is a very important um, time that we're in, a very prophetic time. Even the name of the particular uh, reading is Tegaletu, Tegaletu, which Betorgun Waira. And I appeared, or and I was revealed. I was revealed. Shabbat Shalom. Send that salam, Sabbath peace.